Today I have with me Frankisha Watkins, the CEO of Be Polished Beauty Supply out of Arlington, Texas. Actually, you have several locations in Arlington or in the Dallas Metroplex. That's how, correct. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing good today. How are you? I am good. I'm good. So today um, we're in our minutes in the moment where we're actually showcasing black owned business and entrepreneurs. And so um, I bring to you, bring you here today because I wanted to showcase who you are, what you do and highlight um, your journey as a black entrepreneur. So um, I got your bio and looked at some of the interesting things and and, uh, highlights of your journey. So you are um, a product of an HBCU. Yes, Grambling State University. <laughs> yes, so, ma'am. So how did that experience at an HBCU, um, you think, give you a, a different perspective as you went on your journey? Uh, you froze up a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I said, how did your experience, you think, at an HBCU kind of springboard you into your journey and prepare you for where you are now? Um, so I will say for me, um, going to HBCU, like my school, um, was always taught to operate in, a, um, in excellence. And so that just kind of carried on with me in my professional career as being in HR for over 10 years, actually over about 15 years. Um, And then having my own business, it just made me want to operate in excellence in everything that I did. Um, I also think going to an HBC, you just have so many relationships with people. So there have been times where I'm like, in this industry, someone says, you do know such and such, your classmate is now a design essentials rep. But I'm like, let me start ordering from him. So I think it's just the relationships and operating in excellence and anything we do and just, you know, grand fam, we're all close and connected so anytime you know I have something going on they 100% support me that's awesome I think going to a predominantly white university um as I did I think I'm a little jealous that I didn't go to (laughs) HB because of the love and the the shared commonality and also um the shared experience and and kind of the growth opportunities that you have when it's a collective and you see people excelling that looks like um, that look like you right. I think it offers a different perspective in in the potential um, that you have and there's a different level of um, competition right there's a different level of iron sharp, sharpening iron so to speak absolutely. right absolutely be polished is a beauty supply um, business um, what made you go into beauty supply you know, um, I always say, say it was something divine. Um, it's nothing that I ever thought I would be doing, to be honest. Um, I have ha- always had a love for beauty supply store. You know, as an African-American woman, we're always doing something to our hair. And so for me, going into a beauty supply store was always kind of therapeutic. I just would like to go in, read the labels, see what they had new, get whatnots. Um, and then it started to turn into more of a passion. Like I found myself going into a beauty supply store every chance I got into. And then when the natural hair um, movement really kicked off years ago, I will turn into a full blown product junkie. So I was actually making my own flaxseed gel, making my own butters, doing reviews. I actually thought I would have uh, my own product line or be some type of famous YouTube influencer. That's kind of the direction I was going in. And I think God just had a different direction for me. Well, I know he did. And I remember when the fit, when the thought just hit me and it came out of nowhere, like I was literally driving and it was like open a beauty supply store. And it kind of was just took me by surprise because I was like, where did this come from? Like, I have never you know, thought about being in retail. I've worked a retail job, but it was nothing that I anticipated happening. So for me, it really was just be um, a passion that turned into, well, a hobby that turned into a passion that turned into a dream. And now here we are today with three locations in three years, I guess. Yeah. Almost three years. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, 
I read that you were a HR professional prior to um, stepping out on a limb to become your own business owner. Um, you also have your own consulting um, firm in the industry to help support other people that are looking to go into the beauty supply industry. But that's a that takes a lot of risk to step yeah. out on faith, um, as you you know kind of discussed. So what was the thing that made you say, you know what, um, I'm going to leave HR and open my own business? Well, you know, I actually just stopped working last summer. So okay. I've continued to maintain a full-time job. Um, either I was doing contract or I was employed full-time somewhere up until last summer. Um, this is the longest that I have not worked in corporate America. It's interesting because during my journey, there was times where I would get laid off. I've never had an issue with un or being employed. Um, and it would just be like, we've eliminated the role. And so I was like, okay, God, it's on time for me to move on to the next. So I would take a couple of months off, get another job or a contract or something to that nature. Um, but yeah, I literally have been working full-time job in addition to the stores, um, the entire almost three years that I've been in business, um, I did that because this business is not cheap. Like it, it's not cheap and it's not an immediate return on your investment. Um, and so you have to slowly scale your business and get your foot traffic up. And so I was not expecting the store to take care of itself and me because um, I still have my personal bills. And so, yeah, I just stopped working um, last summer and then I decided at that point that, okay, God, you keep allowing me to get laid off these positions, get it eliminated for one reason or the other. It's not performance related or anything. So this must be your way of saying it's time to let it go. Step 100% out on faith and um, focus on your babies, you know, because at that time I was, you know, working and trying to manage the stores and it was a lot going on. So he removed me from that, that role. Um, and it was the best thing that I think has happened to me. So that faith walk and being able to just step out there on faith and make a decision that could potentially and prayerfully be life changing for you. Um, what are some of the, the risk or unique experiences as a black business owner that um, kind of keep you up at night? Like what are those things that maybe test that faith of stepping out there to be an entrepreneur? You know, for me in this industry, it's definitely um, the up and down in the business. Like you, you can have a a thousand dollar day, but then the next day you can have a two hundred dollar day. Like it's so much unknown in the retail space. Um, and so for me, what keeps me up at night is okay. I, I always. And I know God has me, but you always question, like, am I going to fail? Like, am I making the right decision? Am I going to fail? Are people going to support me? Are people going to, you know, see, try, see what I'm doing in the community, what I'm doing for them? Like, are they going to actually see me? So those are the things that kind of keep me up at night, even though I still have three locations have three location because I'm opening the third one next Saturday, but it's still always the uncertainty, like, you know, am I going to fail? Um, but again, you just have to push through that mindset. And I tell people all the time, like, especially my mentees, if you focus on your why, then those are the time, those are the things that's going to continue to help you get past the hard times because not every day is going to be a good day. Not every month is going to be a good month, but if you focus on why you're doing it, then that will help you like stay consistent in the journey. And you, you talk about what's your why. I think that carry, carries over, not just personally, professionally, but what is your why? I know you mentioned, you know, being able to provide products for women of color and seeing people that, you know, are Black in the industry of beauty supply is small, but what is your why on why you continue to multiply, why you continue to stay the course? So for me, it's always been providing a need. Um, when I first got into the business, we were seeing a rash of 
women who look like us getting treated poorly in the beauty supply stores across the U.S. And so for me, it was to provide a, sh a different shopping experience. You know, the reality is everybody can go anywhere to get some shampoo, but what's going to differentiate you from someone else to say, you know what, I'm going to bypass all of these other beauty supply stores and I'm going to go to Be Polish to get the shampoo. And for me, it's always just been to provide a different shopping experience, provide a space that is, makes women feel comfortable. I remember when I first opened, I had women who would come in looking for a wig and will feel, feel comfortable enough in that space to take off the wig that they currently have, you know? And so that's, that means a lot to me is just providing a different shopping experience for everyone who comes in regardless of, you know, race, nationality, whatever it is. And then too, now it's become more of um, showing other black women and men that it can be done. Um, typically what we see in this business is stores opening and then we see them close shortly after. Um, and there's a variety of reasons why that happens, but now it has also as a mentor um, to show one, how to do it, how to do it well, and how to be competitive, how to scale your business and just show other people that it can be done. I really never set out to be a mentor. I was always like, I'm gonna open my store and I only had plans to open one store and that's gonna be it. But now it's bigger than me. Um, I don't know how many DMs, text messages, uh, emails, all TikTok messages. Like I wanna open one too. Oh my gosh, you motivate me. This is so inspiring. And so now it's really become bigger than me um, in this and I didn't even expect it. So the name of your, that that is um, inspiring because it also shows each of us, you know, I think having the entrepreneurial spirit, I think all of us think of our day-to-day -day and then what it is that is most fulfilling and the impact that we want to have in the world and what that looks like for us, right? And so everybody having their own why and what the journey is, I think it's very unique that, your consulting, um, your consulting is Watkins Way Consulting, and this is the company that you use to also um, be a mentor to other people who are looking to get into the business industry. Um, I think that's awesome that you are reaching back and pulling people along that have that um, additional support. Who was it foundationally for you that was that for you? Ooh, in this industry? <laughs> Or just in per period, because sometimes the beauty industry is unforgiving and people don't want to pull together. But who was it in your life that kind of helped mold you in, in, in that way? You know, I would probably have to say um, my parents, uh, my parents were always like go-getters, um, both my mother and my father. My father's an entrepreneur too. And I think I get a lot of that from him. So I would have to say it was, it was my parents. And then in this industry, when I started researching, I honestly didn't know Black Beauty Supply was a thing. Like I literally went to Google and I was like, oh my God, there's Black Beauty Supplies. And I remember reading an article one day on Instagram and it was about two young Young girls in California who were the youngest beauty supply store owners. And I was just like, wow, you know, and so I started reading up on them. And then I just kind of get deeper and deeper into the industry. Um, actually worked at Sally Beauty because I said, you know, if I'm going to do this thing, let me go somewhere where I know, um, they have a business model. And so I had an intern. They didn't know they were my intern <laughs> at Sally Beauty. And I worked there for about six months and I learned so much. And it really helped me to kind of strategize and see how I wanted to do my own business and treat my customers and all of that stuff. Awesome. So you you have three locations in the Texas um, Metroplex, in the Dallas Metroplex? Yes, ma'am. And where are they located again? So my first store um, is Arlington, Texas. We just celebrated three years there. Um, I opened my second store last year in Addison, Texas. So we just celebrated a year there. And now we're opening in Mesquite, Texas um, next Saturday on the 12th. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yes. That's, um, do you have good support um, to help you along the way? And I mean, you're growing your business so quickly and um that's inspiring that, you know, you can be up and running. Like, do you have the good support um, along the way? 
Yeah, so I always say staff can make or break you. Um, I've had pretty much the same staff over in my Arlington location for the, almost the entire three years. Um, there's been some turnover. Addison, I have a good team now. It's been consistent turnover. And Ar in Mesquite, I do have staff there too. But yeah, I have support. My family, my friends, um, they push me. And when I meet to vent, they listen to me. Um, I'm also a moderator of a Facebook group that is specifically for Black beauty supply store owners and those that are aspiring owners. So we have conversations in there all the time that only us, we can relate to. Um, so yeah, I have some people that I talk to on a consistent basis that, you know, kind of help me and guide me because even though I'm a mentor, there are people that have been in business a lot longer than I have been. And so I do reach out to them and say, what would you do in this type of situation? And what are, what's selling in your area? So yeah, it's a, it's a good support system that I have around me. That's good. That's important. I think just to be able to have those sounding boards of people and yes. knowing, <laughs> knowing that you have someone that will keep you grounded in, 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 in that journey, you know, yes. in that journey. And I think um, as a Black entrepreneur, I know we hear initiatives and there's several organizations like Shop Black that are looking to um, showcase Black entrepreneurs and businesses. Um, just in your perspective, why do you think it's important for people to support Black businesses? You know, I feel like one, um, when we open businesses, typically we are self-funding, right? Um, most of us aren't getting major business loans, um, joint vent, like capital, capital from other people, investors. And so we put so much into it um, that it's almost like, okay, we've put all of this money into it, this time into it, developing this, operating in excellence, you know, and a lot of biz Black businesses, we're doing it because there has been a need, you know, there's a need for whatever they're selling or whatever niche they're in. And so we're really doing it for the community, you know, and so I feel like if we're doing it for the community and we put so much of our own personal time in it to provide a service, then yeah, I feel like, yeah, come on and support us a little bit you know you don't have to do it all the time but support is support so yeah it's just so much that we put into it um and you know we're small businesses so for me like I employ people who want you know either have part-time jobs or other part-time jobs um or full-time jobs that are looking for additional income to get to their goals you know I have a, a employee who's a young mother she's you know doing her thing I had an employee who was going to school to be a doctor you know so it's not just you're supporting me but you're also supporting the people that we employ because we do have staff that relies on us on a daily basis to pay their their bills so yeah it's time to give back into the community that's awesome. And from a, a give back community, I know that you are um, a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And part of that is the sisterhood and the service to the community. Yeah. So what parallels can you draw um, from your sorority to also into your business that are you think are foundational, that are helping you to move the needle as an entrepreneur and um, a community um, partner in many regards. Right, so um, we do do things with the community. Um, we were just part of a Juneteenth celebration with Pink Lusters. Um, so it's more about being active in the community, showing people that we're employing the community. At some point, I wanna develop a scholarship um, for other people who are in this industry. Um, I do employ a lot of people that are cosmetology students. So it's all about just, you know, balancing that support, um, aligning the goals for that I have with the bit for my business. Um, and really just being active in the community. I will say since I've been open, it's been so much of trying to grow the business that we I have not been able to do the things that I wanted to do. Uh, but now that we're getting to a certain place in this business, it's definitely going to be more things that I plan to do, like food drives. We did that, voter registration drives. Um, that's something that I plan to do as well. So yeah, it's, it's definitely... Um, it's a hard balance to keep because uh, we do get bombarded with a lot like, hey, can you be a vendor here? Can you do this? Can you donate here? And so we do make decisions on what we're going to participate in. Um, but I do try my best to do as much as I can. 
So they always say you work hard and play hard, right? You should work hard and play hard. And that balance is important to remaining, you know, um, steady and relaxed. So what are the things that you enjoy outside of being entrepreneur, CEO, business owner? um, What are some of those things that help to keep you balanced? You know, I love traveling. And I think that is the biggest thing that I miss. Um, I don't travel as much as I used to when I first, before I opened my store. So I do like to travel um, everywhere. Um, Another thing that keeps me balanced is, you know, prayer, meditation, um, making sure I'm eating and sleeping well, because my first year I did experience bad burnout because I was just going and going and going, not really doing anything for myself. Um, so, you know, and I have a big family, so I do make sure I spend time with them, whether that's going to Louisiana or they're coming here or we're meeting somewhere in Houston. Um, but yeah, I do believe in self-care, especially since I did experience burnout. Um, and it was really, really bad to the point where like, I did not want to do anything, didn't want to get out the bed. Um, so now I try to balance it all. Um, but traveling is my number one thing. I don't get to do it as much, but I'm going to try it again. And then COVID has messed up everything too. So of COVID, I mean, COVID has impacted a lot of businesses. And as you're seeing growth in your business, um, it would sound like COVID um, hasn't impacted you. But how has COVID either impacted you or helped your business? So actually, COVID helped our business. Um, When the height of everything was getting shut down, we shut down probably about a week and a half. We were doing online. Um, But then some new orders came out where it was saying, if you do online, you can go to your physical location and do also do curbside and do shipping. And so we were actually the first uh, beauty supply store in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex that would that went curbside. So we were doing curbside uh, phone orders, online orders, DMs, all of it. And that really put us on the map because it was we went viral more than once. There's a black beauty supply store in Arlington. Um, that has this, that has this. And it was so crazy because people were really coming from across the, the the city to get lash glue. And I'm like, where are y'all going? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Everything shut down. Why are y'all so concerned about this lash glue? But yeah, so it really helped us and propelled us because we got so much um so much um, more exposure than we that we didn't have before. Um, so I will say that it has definitely helped the business. Yeah. I think the first place I saw you was on TikTok. So I definitely um, shared the information with my sisters that live in, in uh, Mansfield about yeah. your, I was like, did you know? Because they were also kind of, I think the challenge that people had was we're used to going to get our hair done and our nails and COVID kind of compacted everything so it's like you had to be your own beauty supply and right and nail pick and all these other things so um finding those resources i think were were really huge and like you said some businesses saw a lift in mm-hmm. in covid being able to be responsive to the needs of the people so i think um that's great that you're one of the survivors yes um and thrivers during um the pandemic and that's good to know I I think inspiring to know um, that it all businesses are not failing because of COVID. And it's a testament to who you are as a business person um, to still be vigilant and optimistic in that moment. One last question I had, Um, I think all of us kind of look back and think if I only knew this when I was younger, or if I only did this or made this different decision, um, maybe things would have been different. What would you tell your 17 year old self knowing what you know now about your journey and how you are where you are or where you strive to be? Um, I would have said probably live a little bit more. Um, it's always been one achievement after the next for me. Um, so high school, straight to college, straight to college, straight to grad school, straight to grad school, straight to work, you know, and so forth. And so I would probably say back then it's okay to 
live a little bit, travel, not focus so much on your career, you know, focus on other things in your life. Now that I'm, and I'm just now doing that in 40, what I'm 42, I'll be 42. Um, so yeah, I would probably say live a little, um, because you're going to be very busy (laughs) when you get older. Um, because I think sometimes we just, we are always just, it's always a rat race. It's like the, the next thing I have to do or the next thing I have to achieve. And I don't think I've ever just taken some time to like celebrate the wins that I've had or, you know, just say, I'm just going to, you know, live a little bit more. So I would definitely say live a little bit more. Um, And I would also say pursue your, everything that you want to do, follow all your dreams, which I'm actually doing right now. So, yeah. Cause I didn't think I would be here, honestly. (laughs) No. Now to that, where did you think you would be? I mean, you started out, you have a degree in um, IT, is it? Computer information. Information, Yes. And so you went from that to HR and now your own boss and and CEO of your own company. So where did you think you would end up? You know, honestly, when my younger years, I wanted to be an attorney. Um, So I remember going to uh, take your daughter for work day with this woman for a couple of years and she was an attorney. Um, So I I always thought I would probably be an attorney, um, but I I didn't go that route. Um, But yeah, I just didn't think I would be here. I don't know where I thought. And then once I got into corporate America, I always just thought that I would be in HR. You know, I've been HR manager. And then the last couple of years, I've been on the technology side, HRIS. So I always just thought that that was going to be my career for the rest of my life until I retired. Um, But now I'm here. So (laughs) it's an awesome place to be. I mean, thriving business, looking to expand. I think that is a testament to your foundation, um, the work that you put in on the front end. And I think there's no mistakes in life. I think that um, you seem to be thriving as a business owner. So congratulations with that. And then your future endeavors. If If there's anybody that's looking to, you know, step out on faith as you have and create their own business, what advice would you give them? Black, white, red, regardless of their culture or ethnicity, what advice would you give them? I would definitely say one, do your research in the industry that you're trying to get into. Um, See if you can actually get employed in that industry. That's why I kind of got a part-time job at Sally's because it's one thing to say, I want to do this, but it's another thing to actually have to do it every day. And so working at Sally Beauty was a confirmation for me that this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, And then two, don't believe all the hype. You know, people will tell you, quit your job and just step out of faith. No, like I tell my mentees that you need to work. You need to work for a period of time until your store is able to take care of itself and take care of you. Um, I think social media has really romanticized entrepreneurship and everybody, they see people doing this and on jets and vacationing, not really knowing like it's a lot that goes into it. It's a lot of sleepless nights. It's a lot of tears that you go through. Um, And I, when you're transparent in my situation, like how I felt like I experienced like entrepreneurial depression because again you can have a really good day and then you can have a really bad day and you're like what's going on here you know so the highs and lows of being in business um it's definitely challenging and you have to have a strong mindset um so yeah I would just say do your research try to get a part-time job in the industry you're going into um and don't quit your day job right away because it's so much uncertainty when it comes to owning your own business and you don't want the additional stress of saying okay am I going to have to pay this rent or am I going to be able to pay myself and especially with being a brick and mortar we have so much overhead um and staff and payroll taxes and everything else. So it's definitely one of those things that I knew I had to continue to work for a period of time so I can, you know, scale my business and let it grow enough for it to be able to take care of itself and then pay me a little bit of money, whatever's left. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look amazing. Your business has, um, look like they're thriving and that I, you know, I'm greatly impressed with the journey. And I think even knowing that there are black business, um, beauty supply businesses out there, I think 
people, they don't get enough exposure. Correct. And um, there's not a lot of information out there about black owned biz businesses, um, specifically beauty supply. So um, you also have online services on top of your brick and mortar, is that right? That's correct. So we do have e-commerce, uh, bepolishedbeautysupply.com. We ship across the world. We've shipped to Sweden. We've shipped a lot of different places. Uh, we just got an order from St. Croix. Um, so yeah, so we ship everywhere. Um, and again, it's bepolishedbeautysupply.com. So we can shop there 24 seven. Well, thank you so much, Frankisha, for your time. I'm excited for you. Many wishes. And thank you for taking time out um, with me for Black History Month to showcase Be Polished Beauty Supply. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have an amazing day. You too.